And hi, welcome to So Today I Did a Thing. This is the third time we've tried to start this video tonight, so fingers crossed it works. Welcome to Foodie Friday number three. And so Joe had a really fabulous idea that we should pre-cook, pre-bake, whatever it is in advance, and then taste it, see how it goes. And instead of doing a follow-up, remind me, I'll get back to the follow-up in a second, just, you know, do the recording of, hey, these are the things that we found, here are the pitfalls that we found with this particular recipe, or these are the adjustments that we made because our family liked them better. So we tried that. Um, it was gonna be keto cookies today on Foodie Friday, but yesterday when we pre-baked, the family decided they were just a bust, so we're not even going there. Not even going there. Back to follow-up. I'm so sorry, I totally forgot to do a follow-up last Saturday from our breakfast bake slash app called it Cheeseburger Casserole. I will tell you that it disappeared very, very quickly on Saturday morning and it tasted really good. Um, I will say that the next time we do it, we're gonna use some breakfast sausage as opposed to just ground turkey. I have the Whataburger sausage in the fridge right now for the next time we make it. So yeah, give that one a shot. It was definitely worth it. Now, so instead of keto cookies tonight, we are going to, I promise Mary, we love you in this house. You are an icon to our family. We are going to keto up a Mary Berry recipe. Yes, we are going to make the very best shortbread, but we're gonna make it keto. I know this, yes, no. We did not pre-bake this. We have not tried this because after the bust that keto cookies were, we're totally going out on a limb here and we're going to do the whole pre-cooked, pre-baked thing again next week and hopefully it won't be a, okay, what are we going to do for Fruity Friday this week? Which is what today was. All right, so the very best shortbread. Mary calls for plain flour, semolina, butter, castor sugar, flaked almonds are optional, we're not doing that. And then, um, I'm totally going to butcher this, please forgive me. Y'all feel free, comment, record yourself saying this correctly. Um, demerara sugar, we didn't get any of that either for dusting. So that makes me think like powdered sugar or icing sugar, but maybe it's not and we didn't get that. So I'm not gonna worry about it because I don't have powdered artificial sweetener. So what instead what we're doing, instead of eight ounces of plain flour, we're using eight ounces of coconut flour because texturally they seem to be very close and the almond flour is a bit grainier. So we're using four ounces of the almond flour instead of four ounces of semolina. And then I have um, four ounces of granulated monk fruit sweetener. It also calls for eight ounces of butter and you know on keto we love our fat. So we have eight ounces of butter here right now. So what we're gonna do is we are going to follow the recipe exactly other than the ingredients for the most part. So <laughs> I've already went ahead and prepared our pan. It says 12 by nine, but I have a 13 by nine, so that's what we're going with. And then we're going to mix together the coconut flour and the almond flour. And then we're gonna add the butter until it forms a, with the sugar until it forms a soft dough. From there, we're just gonna press it into the pan and stick it into the oven. The oven has been preheated to 325 degrees. Our cookbook, because it's Mary Berry and she's fabulous and it's also British, it calls for centigrade or Celsius temperatures. But um, yeah, I did the math and made the adjustment. It's 325 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, here we go. Mix. I apologize for the, the volume now. Oh. It likes it. Maybe it looks pretty good. It's pretty blunt. All right, so this is a Ninja brand food processor, blender, mixer, um, spiralizer, the whole kit and caboodle. So I'm going to add my sugars. I'm going to mix that in first and then I'm going to add my butter. Let it go first. Now I'm gonna add my butter. Oh my goodness, this is such a mess. 
Hopefully the butter will fit. Or I could just get a bowl out. Maybe I'll get a bowl in my cup. Yeah. Mary says to use your fingers. My hands are clean. I do wash them prior to this. Okay. Well, so also that way, you know, we can talk a little bit other than listening to the ninja. So today I want to talk about keeping your spirits up when your job search seems to come up empty. This week, I have had the daunting experience of, uh, by the way, I totally recommend Ninja products. Nobody sponsors us, you know that. Ninja, come sponsor us. H-E-B, we're still waiting. Um, <laughs> so, the, I take off my ring. I had the daunting experience of the more than 50% of my applications at this point have come back, thank you, but no thank you. So yeah, that's been very discouraging. I, you know, have multiple, multiple, multiple um, where am I looking for? recruiters looking on my behalf. I talk with them all regularly. I have um, multiple job sites that I look at. But yeah, more than 50% of my applications in the last six weeks have come up. Thank you, but no thank you. I've had a couple of second interviews. One that said, you know, you might be too overqualified for this position. How are you too overqualified for this position? I mean, I don't know. But that turned out to be a non-offer. Um, I, yeah, I'm trying to not be discouraged. It's very difficult. I probably have flour on my nose now, don't I? <laughs> Jamie says no, so we're good. She has decided that she's going to be silent in the videos now because she heard herself on the first video and she's like, oh, I don't like the way I sound. Now she's looking at me funny like, mom, why are you telling me secrets? <laughs> it's okay though. I think she sounds bad. Um, yeah, so how do I stay motivated? Well, I will tell you that Blizzard, AFK, that's how they do, this is one, <laughs> AFK sent me a thank you but no thank you for an accounting position at Blizzard, and it was crazy nice and really uplifting even though it was a thank you but no thank you. Um, so that was good. Most of them are after much consideration and know that all of this, you know, every position with this company is very competitive, blah, 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 blah. We have determined to move forward in this process without your application, blah, 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 blah. Right? But Blizzard's was, you know, don't let it get you down. Just because, you know, it was something like, just because we're not ready to hire you right now, it was like, whoa. You know, it said, you know, don't be discouraged. Know that your job search is important and the right job will come along. And that was really cool because it was still a thank you, but no thank you. But it wasn't thank you, but no thank you. It was, you know, we, we considered you. But we're just not ready to hire you right now. Don't be discouraged. So that was kind of cool. Um, sometimes it's really unfriendly and <laughs> discouraging when you have to get the message from Indeed that, or another job board like Monster Career Builder, Career Builder, pardon me, that a position with the company is being moved on and they didn't even bother to let you know. You know, they're, Indeed's like, oh, hey, by the way, um, you weren't the candidate. You know, they didn't even look at your resume. They didn't even look at your application. Just, hey, FYI, we're going with somebody else. Or they decided to go with somebody else. It's like, at least look at my application and my resume first, you know? That kind of thing. By the way, this is kind of fun. I'm sort of making a mess out of this bowl over here. But it's, you know, it's kind of fun. It's slowly coming together. I'm really just hoping to bind the flour and the sugar, the flowers, pardon me, and the sugar with the butter, because that's what shortbread is, right? Flour, sugar, and butter. And it smells very coconutty. I like co the coconut smells though, so I don't know if Jamie's okay with that. She's making a face. <laughs> but 
yeah, so how, what's not, so what's a way to stay motivated? Don't give up. Just don't. Um, you know, this YouTube channel has totally helped me stay motivated just in life in general because you know, I gotta get up. I gotta decide when I'm gonna make home food Friday. We, um, are getting stuff together for Witchy Wednesday. That starts this week, guys. Are you excited? I know we're excited. So, yeah, you know, Jamie and I are looking at where our first spells are going to be. And what exactly is witchcraft? Hmm, that's pretty, that's pretty intense. It's a whole conversation in and of itself. Texturally, this feels kind of like sand meets Play-Doh. And I don't like sand. I also don't like Play-Doh. I don't like sand because it gets stuck in your shoes and in your toes and your toes. It just, ugh, it's grainy and gritty. But the more I need this, the softer it gets. So that's kind of cool. And that's where I get the whole Play-Doh thing. And my biggest thing against Play-Doh is I can't stand the way Play-Doh smells. That and it gets stuck in carpet, like sand does. I mean, it's really not Play-Doh in and of itself that I don't like. I just... Play-Doh, kinetic sand, magic sand, all that crap gets stuck in your carpet and you can't get it out. It doesn't vacuum up. It's like glitter. It never goes away. So yeah, no, but that's, that's really what I have against sand and Play-Doh. But, and the smell. Ugh, Play-Doh smells so awful. But this smells like coconut. So that's kind of cool. Oh, it's coming together, Jamie, look. Look, it's coming together. Thanks, Mary. Tell me to do this with my hands. I really, really hope that these taste at least okay. <laughs> because I would hate to think that I made a Mary Berry recipe, although I messed it up, so it's not really a Mary Berry recipe. It's a just a second version of a Mary Berry recipe. I love you, Mary. If you ever get to watch this, I just know that you are my daughter's baking hero. Um, and that you, you are an icon in our house. Let's see. So yeah, you just, you just can't give up. You have to remember what it is that you're looking for and you have to find it. And sometimes you apply for stuff that isn't what you're looking for. You know, the whole check the box because you have to make a certain number of applications or a certain number of job search requirements to get an employment. And you know, you never know. Those conversations could potentially happen and they could be meaningful and powerful. I had a couple of interviews from a check the box, if you will, um, application that I submitted. I didn't get the job. However, I did get the experience of talking to someone that I wasn't initially interested in. But, you know, there's stuff out there for everybody. Um, Fortunately, okay, I think it's time to press the pan, kiddo. Fortunately, I do have a reason to get up 80% of the week. <laughs> um, I take my son to school. So, and then that's Monday through Thursday. My husband takes him to school on Friday. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something. I know a lot of people, once they're unemployed, they don't have a reason to get up, and that's scary, and that's sad, and those days that I don't have a reason to get up, I do not want to go out of bed. Um, Joe's been working from home today and yesterday. He took during the school both days, and I slept in. I made myself get up. I didn't want to either day. Um, but yesterday, I got up, and I applied for jobs. And today I got up and I applied for jobs and went shopping for <laughs> some stuff for next week. Then, okay, now it's starting to collapse on me, so we should probably put it in the pan. So what I've done is I've sprayed the heck out of um, the parchment paper that I've lined this baking dish with. It's the canola oil spray, and it's supposed to just press it into this pan. Okay, so I'm pressing it in. And the whole reason I use the paper like this is because I just want to be able to pick it up and pull it out. Okay, I do not know how she thinks. Mary thinks that this is going to fit all across the pan. I don't know. But I believe in her, because she's Mary. 
So yeah, um, let's see what else. You just have to remember that you can't give up. I will say that professionally right now. Okay, we're gonna do this because we're going back and forth. I will say that professionally right now, I do feel like I have no purpose. And that's really difficult for me because I've had professional purpose for <laughs> um more than 20 years almost yeah more than 20 years wow that makes me feel old not as old as these bifocals do but that's neither here nor there so yeah it's to not have a professional purpose is really scary and sad for me and it's difficult for me to handle and i know that I need a job for my mental health almost more almost as much if not more than for the financial aspect security of it. I'm very fortunate that when I lost my job we only lost half of our income as opposed to all of our income which is what I know happens sometimes for others. So, okay Mary's right it does fit. Wow. I'm trying to make it even all the way across. I'm not doing so hot over here on this side. Oh it cracked. That's okay though. All right, so according to the cookbook, this needs to go in the oven for about half an hour. And while that's going on, I am going to make some coleslaw for dinner tonight. Tonight for dinner, we're having pulled pork and coleslaw. Jaren will have some coleslaw. Jamie will probably eat. I can't hear a word you're saying. You need to speak, child. She's trying to talk to me, but she's mouthing, and I can't understand. I can't read her lips right now, so she's going to have to talk. It's okay. All right, anyway, so I'm going to put this in the oven here in just a minute, and then I'm going to make some coleslaw. It's good coleslaw. Jamie doesn't like coleslaw, so she's going to have carrots or broccoli. We do have our broccoli in the fridge, and she likes that too. Jerry and Joe and I will eat coleslaw, though. I got to get some Hawaiian rolls. Not keto, but they love them. We all love them in our house, let's be honest. But so not keto. Okay, it's getting there. It's getting there. I'm almost done. I just have to get it into this other corner. I'm kind of move it this way a little bit. I'm getting a really funny look from my child as she holds the phone. Um, do you guys have any recommendations? Feel free to put it in the comments for um, like a stand to hold my phone while we're doing this. So maybe she could come on the other side of the camera, especially next week because she totally wants to be involved in Witchy Wednesdays. I know, probably more than, she's making a face, she's smiling. So probably more than just um, behind the camera. And I know Jaren wants to get involved when he can on camera as well. Oh, it's almost there. Are your hands clean? She's making a face, they're probably not clean. She's touching my phone, they're definitely not clean. All right, so there it is. I'm gonna wash my hands, poke it all over with the fork like it says, stick it in the oven. Here we go. And if Jamie is showing you the back of my shirt, oh, she's shaking her head that she's not. I'm just saying, the shirt that I have on today is, um, can be found at Megan March Merch. She's a fantastically awesome, sexy romance novelist. Um, and this particular shirt, it uh, talks about my favorite series of hers. So if you ever want to read some really sexy romance, Megan March, it's great. Okay, let me throw this in the oven. Oh, stab it with the fork first. Supposedly, we're going to get 30 um, fingers out of this. I should probably like, make it in a neat little row, but I'm not going to. She's like, why would you make it in a neat little row, Mom? All right. Okay, into the oven it goes. Four. 35 minutes, right? Is that what it says? Yes, 35 minutes. Okay. 
Okay, here it goes. All right, while that's in the oven, like I said, I'm gonna clean up the island a little bit and get ready to make some coleslaw. So feel free to join me. We'll continue to discuss strategies on how to stay motivated and you know what not to do. Like don't drink, don't drink your uh, your feelings. Don't eat them either. Because I will say that uh, eating my feelings, well, even on keto, you gain weight when you eat your feelings, and that's not fun. Okay, so we are done with the very best short bread. We love you, Mary Mary. Maybe next week. Okay. And then we're going to run off the table and start cutting some cabbage. I apologize for how messy our sink is over here. We're soaking some bottles that can potentially be spell jars at future times. I also ordered some. They're on their way from Amazon. Mix the dressing. The larger one for the coleslaw itself. Okay. Red cabbage. Green cabbage. I don't really want that leaf. Oh, I remembered. I didn't throw it away. And I think we've already eaten this one. Some mayonnaise and some vinegar. Okay, all right. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grate the cabbage. I'm gonna need a bigger bowl. I'm gonna need a bigger bowl because half the uh, half the green needs to go in a bigger bowl. This should do. All right. So. What is a way to stay motivated without eating your feelings, without drinking your feelings, without deciding that this is dirty and now we need a different bigger bowl? Okay, we'll get there, I promise, eventually. I'll make coleslaw. Okay, this one's good. <laughs> Alright. So yeah, so what is it? I'm going to read the green first just because... It's, um, there's more of it. So what is it that you can do to stay motivated? Well, exercise. I know, I am the worst person in the world to tell you to exercise. Trust me, ask anyone who knows me. I don't run even when chased. But I have been doing pretty good on my treadmill. Running, no. Walking, yes. Um, so I had pneumonia and that really cut into my speed, if you will, my activity, because I was hospitalized for a week and by the time I came home, see, yeah, oh, you can get rid of that. All right, and then when I came home, watch, the other one's gonna be fine now that I look at this. The, um, I couldn't get on the treadmill. So by the time I got over my pneumonia fully and my pleurisy, because I've done pleurisy as well, 
I was able to walk a little bit. I could make it around the block. During, because it's cold outside. So I was like, okay, I'll try my treadmill. The beginning of the year came, and two and a half miles per hour, I could do it for 30 minutes. So, first two weeks of January, 30 minutes a day, two and a half miles an hour. During, I'll curl those up and we'll shred them with the next part. During, um, the last couple of weeks, I've been able to go 45 minutes to an hour on two and a half miles per hour. I hope on Monday, when February comes along, I'll be able to do three miles per hour for 30 minutes. And then we'll see if I can go longer than that, and then I will. I've also started lifting some weights, very, 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 very small weights. Really small. But I do. And it's something, and that's an hour and a half that my mind is not worrying about why I don't have a job and what I need to do to try and get a job. Okay. Try and get this to where it's a little more malleable and I can curl it up and still shred. I also spend a lot of time with Jamie during the day. She's doing school remotely, so during her off periods, she comes and hangs out with me. And it's fun. Sometimes we just sit around and talk. Other times it's, let's, you know, we just cuddle because she's my baby girl. And cuddles are fun. Um, yeah. Sometimes we talk about what we're going to do on Pretty Friday and what we're going to do on Witchy Wednesday. That's been a lot of our topic lately is what are we going to do on Witchy Wednesday. We're very excited about next week. Um, let's see. What else can you do to stay motivated? Don't check your job sites all the time. You know, you check them once in the morning and then once at lunchtime. And then once in the evening. Because you don't want to hear, ooh, that could have been painful. You know, you don't want to have all of the, you, you just don't want to hear the negativity all the time, right? And if, and you know, Indeed emails you stuff, you know? So you're like, okay, Indeed, thanks for sending me whatever it is that you sent me. Maybe there's a job posting in this email that I haven't already applied for or they haven't already rejected me. And you go from there. Also, think outside the box. Where, even though it's not on a job site, maybe it's not posted specifically, but what can you do? You know, for a minute, Jamie, because she's totally my partner in crime. We talked briefly about making dice sets and selling them on Etsy. And then we did the math and um, we'd have to take a loss initially to be able to do it. So maybe, maybe it can be a side hustle once I get a main hustle. Yeah. But if we do decide to make dice sets, we'll totally do it on So, so Today I Did a Thing before we put them, hook them up on Etsy. So, yeah, you know, think about contracting. I never before now thought, I guess I could be a contractor. Okay, sure. A lot of people do it. And here's to say that I totally could use that small And they have to go back and get that small envelope. And here's to say that the contracting position won't end up being something permanent, or maybe contracting is what you like and what you really enjoy because it's not the same thing all the time. It's not with the same company all the time. You know, so maybe you find that you could really go for doing a project here and a project there for different companies. Sometimes it results in you being a Schedule C employer, so self-employment. 
and you have to get a 1099, and you have to file your Schedule C and tax returns, you have to withhold your own taxes, and that's a lot more work than I really want to do. So the couple of recruiters that I've talked to about potentially being a contract employee, a contractor, my stipulation has been, okay, well, I want to be a W-2 employee for the recruiter or somebody, even if it's a W-2 non-benefit employee, that's fine. But I don't want to have to deal with this guy. Look at all of this cabbage. Just make it taste in. All right. So I'm just about done with this green cabbage that I'm shredding. Now I'm going to put it all in a bowl and try desperately not to, you know, grate my hands while I'm at it. Because that would be bad. Okay. The rest of this, I guess, I can just chop up together. There we go. Let's see what I can do. We're just going to use this salad dressing bowl for a second. Oh, well. I'm committing to this. Alright, so there's some shredded green cabbage. And I'm going to shred this purple cabbage. And then I'm going to clean up my mess. I cut up that green cabbage that's in the salad dressing bowl. Make some salad dressing. Oh. I want to say that you know you could utilize your unemployment time to go back to school learn something new and that would be great but going back to school sometimes costs money and like I said my family were really really fortunate that we only lost half of our income as opposed to all of our income. I know people that have lost all of their income and so the idea of going back to school isn't really a feasible possibility for them and still be able to support their families. So there are lots of things that you can do to keep your mind off of things, to keep your mind off of it. Like start a YouTube channel, cook on Friday. Just don't call it Foodie Fridays yet. We got that over here. Um, yeah, just read a book. Dance around your kitchen. I'd say clean house, but I'd be a hypocrite because I don't do that. Jamie's looking at me funny. That's not okay. What am I doing? I'm grating. Oh, are you careful? Oh, you're afraid I'm going to grate my hands? Oh, I'm trying not to. I really am trying not to. Because that would be bad. Oh, that would hurt. So, yeah, as I clean cabbage around my kitchen right now, this is, you know, this is a time where I have definitely. I've definitely been at home more than ever. Um, I've spent more time with my kids than I have when I have a job. So, I mean, I definitely would like to still spend that time with them. So I know that I need to maintain a boundary. My favorite question when I get asked an interview is tell me your weaknesses and your strengths. Well, my weaknesses are that I'm a workaholic. All right, I'm gonna cut that. And sometimes my strength is that I'm a workaholic. But yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna cut the rest of this cabbage up real quick. And then use the salad dressing bowl for salad dressing. And clean up some of this cabbage because it's a mess on her island. Oh, I'm gonna wash my hands off this. You could write a book. Maybe you're creative and you don't realize it. I would like to say that I'm creative. I've started a book. 
I started the book. Um, start a blog. Talk about things that you think are important. I mean, mental health is hugely important to me. I, by the way, up until doing um, what I'm looking for applications for positions now. I didn't know that having depression and anxiety and migraines are considered disabilities. Oh, wow. So that's been a crazy realization for me to think that I've been disabled since I was 19. Um, and probably actually longer than that with anxiety and depression. So that's been, that's been an interesting, that's been an interesting realization and something that I really had to come to terms with because I never thought of myself as someone who was disabled. Um, but at the same time, yeah, I totally have had to miss out on aspects of life professionally and personally due to all three of those things, my depression, my anxiety, and my migraines. Maybe we'll talk about headaches next week and how wonderful those are. Oh. Maybe, yeah, especially since Joe's supposed to stab me this weekend. Um, Joe has to give me monthly injections to mitigate some of my headaches. I can't inject myself. That's why he has to do it. That's true love there, folks. That's true love. Um, let's see. So yeah, just, and sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's okay to not look for a job. You know what? Take a day. Just take a day. You want to spend a day in bed? Spend a day in bed. You know, make sure your kid gets to school if you have one. You have to. Um, then go back to bed. Then go pick up your kid from school. Then go back to bed. You know? Put them in bed with you. Hang out with them. That way you know they're taken care of. That's where I was going with that. Um, but yeah, if you if you can't do it one day, then don't do it that day. And that's okay. All right. This is a mess of cabbage. I, have you taken a picture of this mess of cabbage? Have you gotten a shot of that? She's not in her head making a face like, So yeah, okay, I'm gonna clean up this cabbage and we're gonna make some salad dressing and mix it all together. And yeah, go from there. Um, we have 17 minutes and eight seconds, six seconds, five, you know, it's counting down over there until our shortbread should be ready to come out of the oven. Oh my goodness. Such, oh my goodness, such a mess. Oh, oh wow. How did you get all the way over here? I don't even know. I don't even know. Okay. Purple cabbage is also a great dye in case you're ever curious about stuff like that. No, I've never used it personally, but I've watched family use it and then like to blow that turned about like sure funky color. Yeah, the cousin do some like food coloring dye thing for school for a science project one year. So. It was one of those. Oh, look, that's what you're doing. Okay. All right, Jamie, just for you. I'm going to take this cabbage and this cabbage and go throw them out that way instead of in the trash can. That shortbread actually smells pretty tasty. I keep expecting that our backyard is going to turn into some crazy, you know, ditch garden with all the stuff that we pitch in it, but it hasn't yet. Okay. Oh, I thought I got all this cabbage. Crazy. All right, so salad dressing time. It's all going the same thing. All right, so salad dressing time. There was a recipe, but I just kind of eyeball it at this point because, yeah. Not only that, but I'm not going to lie to you. 
using an actual tablespoon and trying to get the stuff out of that? That's ridiculous. Okay, so we really like Primal Kitchen um, products. We like the mayonnaise. Let's see, what else do we have? But it's made with avocado. It's actually really, really good. I mean, for, for mayonnaise in general, it actually it has flavor. It, it's good mayonnaise. We like that stuff. Okay, what else do we have in here? Um, we have not tried the ranch or the barbecue ranch yet. We're going to, obviously, because we own them. We, they have a green goddess salad dressing, and I marinate chicken in it. And um, everybody seems to think that that tastes pretty okay. In fact, I have some marinating right now. We also have the steak sauce, the Caesar dressing, and the Greek dressing. They've been pretty tasty. Um, so I do know that that's definitely a product brand that works really well for keto and has good flavor. So I'm just going to put a couple scoops in and then I'm going to pour some apple cider vinegar, hook it up, Hill Country Fair, it should be brand. Jamie's like, Ugh. and then some of our garlic pepper, also H-E-B brand, if I didn't tell you guys that before in the previous week. And then I'm going to swish it around with a whisk. A little bitty whisk. And basically make a salad dressing. And whereas I historically like my coleslaw sweet, this is not sweet. But yet it still tastes pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to be that. Now I'm going to be that person. But instead of sticking my finger in it, I'm going to stick a piece in. That's about right. Okay. Okay. Oops, I'm just going to put it in the cabbage and then I'm going to toss it together. Throw it in the refrigerator until it's time to eat. And it will be time to eat in a little bit after the shortbread comes out of the oven. Actually, not really after. It'll be after the shortbread comes out of the oven when it's time to eat. But um, after I put the coleslaw into the refrigerator, I'm going to heat up our pork. Essentially, we're just gonna get dinner ready. And tonight is totally a chicken night. The only thing that I'm actually making for dinner is this whole song. The rest of it, the pulled pork, is um, a product that we buy at Costco. I think it's Kirkland Bread. We'll know for sure here in a couple seconds. And um, the, I mean, the rolls for the kids. King's Hawaiian, 100% all the way. I know I say H-E-B is the best of everything, but I will tell you that there are certain things that I will only buy brand name, and Hawaiian rolls are one of those. So King's Hawaiian, back there on the counter. And, all right. So here's our coleslaw, a bunch of shredded cabbage and salad dressing. And then stick it in the fridge and pull out the whole pork. Let's see, where is the room in the fridge for the coleslaw? All right, so we had to take a brief break um, while the shortbread finished and I nuked the pulled pork. This is the brand that we used, Kirkland, Costco. It's delicious. You should have some. All right, let's see what we have here with the um, shortbread. So it looks like it's going to fall apart, which is so not fabulous, but I'm going to pull it over to the island and take it out and try and cut it on the cutting board. Maybe so it won't be that long you like last time. Yeah, stuff didn't fall on me. Okay, here we go, guys. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, look at that fracture. Okay, it's all right. It's okay. Maybe I don't necessarily want to cut it, but I'm going to try. All right. It's very soft. Shortbread's bone. 
supposed to be soft? I don't know. It is crazy soft. It smells amazing though. Hi, bub. Come here. You're getting a drink. Okay, well, Bubby's here. He's getting a drink. Um, yeah, it smells really good. What? Um, Mary Berry's, like, the best shortbread, but I made it keto. Yeah. Okay. So, eh, I don't know if I'm getting 30 pieces out of this, but whatever. I'm getting a lot of crumblies, that's for sure. Can you what, honey? Um, after dinner, if you really want one. And dinner is going to be just a couple more minutes because the pulled pork has been microwaved. And I've made the coleslaw. All right, so stay motivated. Stay motivated. Don't give up. If you have to take a break, that's fine. Taking a break is one thing, but don't give up. All right? Don't, don't give up. Stay motivated. Bake. Cook. Read a book, write a book, that kind of rhyme. Um, the candles? Yeah. Yeah, more or less. That's for Witchy Wednesdays. All right. Um, this one's for Witchy Wednesdays? Yes, it is. Okay, I'm going to taste this little piece, and it's really, really warm. What does it do? Um, it's really, really warm. Come here. Okay, let me find you a little piece. Oh, very crumbly. Here, you can blow on it because it's really warm. It's like really warm. Ooh. That's not bad. Not bad, just very hot. But it's just really warm here. You don't want any? It's okay. Oh, she's really, really hungry. She needs real food first. It's not bad. I have no idea how we're going to dip that in chocolate because it's real soft. We're probably not going to dip it in chocolate. Maybe we... Yeah, no, I don't... I, I don't know. It's very crumbly. We just have to see what happens. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, so with that, um, please stay motivated. I hope a job hunt doesn't discourage you. I'm hoping that I can be less discouraged than I have been because 50% plus of thank you, but no thank yous really sucks. Trust me. Um, it's time to eat. It's time to feed my kids. It's time to feed my husband. It's time to feed me. <laughs> I hope you have a fabulous Foodie Friday. Thank you for joining us on So Today I Did a Thing. And we'll see you next week, Wednesday, which is Wednesday number one, Friday. Free Friday number four. See you next week.